welcome to Highland Presbyterian Church on this day in which we give God thanks for the life of dear Linda Guru. We have a special welcome for Attorney General Josh Stein, for senators, representatives, other dignitaries. Your presence honors Linda's life work and her dedication to the people of North Carolina and beyond. Welcome. We welcome all who have gathered, Linda's family, Linda's friends, Linda's colleagues. We have gathered because we have respected Linda's leadership and service, because we saw firsthand how deeply she cared, because we yearn to acknowledge the mark that she has made on each one of our lives because we want to give God thanks for the gift of her life. We have gathered to surround John and their daughters, Margaret and Eleanor, to surround Linda's beloved grandchildren and all of their family. We pray our gathering will be a source of comfort and strength for them and a reminder that Linda's gifts continue to bless this world with deep gratitude for a life well lived let us join together in worship let us join together in our responsive call to worship in life and in death we belong to god through the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the communion of the holy spirit we trust in the one triune god the Holy One of Israel, whom alone we worship and serve. As we gather here to give thanks to God for the life of Linda Guru and to bear witness to the resurrection, we rejoice with believers in every time and place, for nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Let us worship God. Let us pray. God, we gather to give you thanks and praise, for you indeed promise never to leave us. We celebrate who you are and all that you have done for us. You hold our lives in your hands. You nurture and encourage us. You challenge us and you catch us. You gift us with vision and wisdom. You put people in our lives to inspire and encourage us, to laugh with us and love on us. You gifted us and this world with your beloved child, Linda and we are forever grateful. Hear our praise and hear our prayers. To you be all glory now and forever. Amen.
We turn now to scripture for words from God, words of comfort, words of hope. We hear first from Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. And turning next to the prophet Jeremiah, the 29th chapter. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all the exiles whom I have sent into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon, build houses and live in them, plant gardens and eat what they produce, take wives and have sons and daughters, take wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage, that they may bear sons and daughters. Multiply there and do not decrease, but seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile and pray to the Lord on its behalf, for in its welfare you will find your welfare. And from the prophet Zechariah, the eighth chapter. The word of the Lord of hosts came to me, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I am jealous for Zion with great jealousy, and I am jealous for her with great wrath. Thus says the Lord, I will return to Zion and will dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. Jerusalem shall be called the faithful city, and the mountain of the Lord of hosts shall be called the holy mountain. Thus says the Lord of hosts, old men and old women shall again sit in the streets of Jerusalem, each with staff in hand because of their great age. And the streets of the city shall be full of boys and girls playing in its streets. Thus says the Lord of hosts, even though it seems impossible to the remnant of this people in these days, should it also seem impossible to me, says the Lord of hosts. Thus says the Lord of hosts, I will save my people from the east country and from the west country, and I will bring them to live in Jerusalem. They shall be my people, and I will be their God in faithfulness and in righteousness. Thanks be to God for these promises and words of comfort. We turn now to the New Testament, first to the Gospel of John, where Jesus says these words to his disciples. Do not let your hearts be troubled, Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. I have said these things to you while I'm still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. and Do not let them be afraid. As we turn to our reading from the Gospel of Matthew, 
there is an urgency in this parable of the talents that Jesus shares with his followers about the importance of using now and using well the talents and the gifts that our Lord gives. Linda certainly sensed that importance and lived her life fully as a result. Jesus says, For it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his servants and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants came and settled accounts with him. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy servant. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy servant. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one who had received the one talent also came forward saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. His master replied, You wicked and lazy servant, you knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on return I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless servant, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Finally, words of great hope and comfort from Paul's letter to the Romans. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Beloved family, honored guests, friends and neighbors, it is good for us to be together this day as we give thanks to God for one of God's most passionate steadfast, formidable saints, Linda Guru, and to bear witness to the resurrection. None of us thought that we would be here for such an occasion at this point. We are all still awash in our unexpected grief. Nevertheless, we are here, here with hearts full of love and gratitude. For we have been, ab been able to share our lives with our dear friend Linda. Mary Oliver, one of the great poets of our era, asked a powerful question in her poem, The Summer Day. Who made the world, she begins. Who made the swan and the black bear? Who made the grasshopper? This grasshopper, I mean the one who has flung herself out of the grass and the one who is eating sugar out of my hand, who is moving her jaws back and forth instead of up and down, who is gazing around with her enormous and complicated eyes. Now she lifts her pale forearms and thoroughly washes her face. Now she snaps her wings open and floats away. I don't know exactly what a prayer is, Oliver says. 
I do know how to pay attention, how to fall down into the grass, how to kneel down in the grass, how to be idle and blessed, how to stroll through the fields, which is what I have been doing all day. Tell me, what else should I have done? Doesn't everything die at last and too soon? Tell me, what is it you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? I love the way that Oliver asks that question. What is it that you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? Even more, I love the way that Linda Guru answered that question with her life. An exceptional steward of the many gifts that God gave her. Linda poured her life out for sake of the well-being of those around her unto her very last. Just after they were married, Linda told John about an encounter she had at the grocery store one afternoon. She was in line when the man in front of her realized that he didn't have quite enough money to pay for the groceries that he was purchasing. Without a thought, Linda stepped up and handed the cashier the rest of the money that was needed. The man seemed rather astonished as he expressed his thanks, but Linda said something to him that John has remembered vividly through these many years. Linda said, that's what folks are for. That's what folks are for. We're here to help each other to use and to share what we have, not just for our own well-being, but for the well-being of our neighbors and our communities and our world. It is not difficult to think of Jesus' parable of the talents as we consider the way that Linda lived her life, an exceptionally gifted woman. Linda Guru was also an exceptional steward, using her gifts in such a way that they multiplied. Whether it was in line at the grocery store, in the North Carolina legislature, at the Winston-Salem Foundation, or at home with her family, Linda was the same person. That's what folks are for. We're here to help one another, to enable folks of all ages and in all conditions of life to thrive. The glory of God is a human who is fully alive, said Irenaeus, one of the early theologians of the church. Linda was fully alive. What brought her to life was enabling others to live, truly live. She stewarded her gifts in such a way that brought life to countless others. With a special focus on the concerns of our African American neighbors, of women, and especially of children. It was that love and concern for children that led her into her work with the Juvenile Justice Council and the North Carolina Guardian Ad Litem Program where she advocated tirelessly for the well-being of children. And those children loved her. The combination of Linda's love and strength and determination was just what they needed at that vulnerable time in their lives. That's what folks are for. She knew that we're all in this together. Dr. King's words resonated deeply with her, that we are all caught in an inescapable network of mutuality, tied in a single garment of destiny. Whatever affects us directly affects all indirectly. As one called to seek the welfare of the city or the state, she took that same love and strength and determination with her to Raleigh when she was elected to the state senate where she quickly learned the ropes that she did not know when she first got there. She labored on behalf of teachers and children and her beloved Winston-Salem. Some of the legislators with whom she served may have appreciated Linda's strength and determination a little less than others. <laughs> that did not faze her in the least as most of you all certainly would know. 
a woman who lived and who served for others. She was determined to use both the gifts that God gave her and the power given to her by the people of North Carolina with her office to make a difference for all the children of her beloved state, even when that meant occasionally saying no to requests from the same people who helped her into the positions in which she served. Some of y'all may know something about that. Her good friend, Senator Bass Knight, certainly knew it. One of Linda's gifts was making connections, both with people, but also between people. She had feet in lots of different camps and an innate love of people, which enabled her to, f to foster countless relationships and opportunities. She was so practical that enabled her to make those connections that would help people find a way to make a difference. That's what folks are for, she would say. Of course, she did all this with such grace and, as you know, more than a little humor. Serving as the head of his law firm when Linda was elected, John Guru wondered out loud with her shortly after her election about how he and his firm would continue their lobbying work with Linda as their newly elected senator in Raleigh without missing a beat. Linda said, well, you can start by picking up your socks. <laughs> Linda poured herself into the lives of others, stewarding her gifts in such a way as to enable to others to find their own. And somehow Linda did all of this in such a balanced way. She was a model for how to live a full life. That fully alive woman, or as her family has described her, the energizer bunny with ten times the energy of people half her age, held together family, faith, Work, community, health, friendship, and more. She was always grateful, always. And that gratitude expressed itself in every part of her very full life, including church, where her thankfulness gave rise to so many acts of ministry. No one really knows how she did it all. I bet she didn't even know how she did it all. She was hospitality incarnate, always making room in her life for others, be they her beloved family, her constituents, the parking attendant at a fundraiser, her friends, or the person in line at the grocery store. She made time for everyone, and she had a gift for making people feel at home when they were with her. In our home, we have a small calligraphy print made by a family friend that says, we need people who mean something to us, people we can turn to so that being with them is like coming home. Being with Linda was like coming home. Among the many, many priorities and commitments of her life, Linda was committed to her family most of all. She loved you all. She was fiercely proud of you. Linda and John together were such a delight with love and support and encouragement and humor in abundance. She actively supported their daughters, Margaret and Eleanor, always celebrating their independence, even when it took them to places like San Francisco and New York. Her sons-in-law were truly sons. And we could hardly talk to Linda without hearing the most recent update on what the grandchildren were up to. She loved to make connections with y'all too. Whatever your interests or your activities may have been, she'd find a way to share in them with you. She loved to do that. Her greatest distress at the beginning of this pandemic was being separated from her beloveds, at least for a while. But Ladybug, as her grandchildren call her, found ways to stay connected. She found ways to love and to support and to encourage. That's what folks are for, after all. 
Well done, good and faithful Linda. Well done. Friends, we gather here this day not only to give thanks to God for Linda, but also to bear witness to the news that just as Linda made room in her life for so, so many, so also that our Lord has made room for Linda. In the presence of God and of all the saints, the news that draws us together here this day, that drew Linda to this congregation and to others over the course of her life, is the news that our Lord Jesus has gone before us passing through this, from this life through death to new life and preparing a place for us in God's very heart where there is plenty of room. Even as Linda works so tenaciously on behalf of vulnerable children, we can affirm the news that God holds tenaciously onto her and onto us all, that there is nothing in life or in death that could ever separate us from God's love for us. It's the news that God is bringing us to the time when there's no more suffering, no more crying, to that time when all things are made new. This is the good news of the gospel that gives life to the church. The news that God has raised Jesus from the dead and promises new life in him. This is the news that gives us hope. In life and in death, Linda Guru belongs to God. We rejoice that Linda is now surely in the company of the saints in light. I have no doubt that the saints are delighting in Linda's company. She's probably helping connect some of them who hadn't gotten to know each other yet. I'm pretty sure that she's also finding ways to keep using her gifts. As you may have seen in her obituary, Linda had a tell, a signal for when it was time to wrap things up. I suspect she probably used it quietly anyway, with a sermon or two along the way. Maybe she's even using it now with this one, I don't know. (laughs) Anyway, she would say, anyway. So, anyway, here's that question again. What will you do with your one wild and precious life? My goodness, Linda Guru answered that question with surpassing energy and intelligence and imagination and, most of all, love. She multiplied the gifts that God gave her in every part of her life. And all of us and this community and this world is better for sake of what she's done. What's your answer? What will you do with your one wild and precious life and with the gifts that God has given to you? The living God, the one who gives us life and who gives us gifts and talents is ever curious about how we are going to be answering that question. I suspect Linda would want to know as well. Family and friends, honored dignitaries and guests, sisters and brothers, one and all, thanks be to God for the life of Linda Guru, for the new life that she now lives in God's very heart. May the living God grant us comfort and strength and peace as we grieve, as we give thanks, and as we continue to appreciate and steward and celebrate the gifts that God has given us, especially especially the gift of one another. Amen.
mercy him. Let us join our hearts in prayer. All compassionate God, we have come together because of the balm you pour into our hearts and our lives. When we are weary, you pour your healing balm of strength into our souls. When we are discouraged, your balm comes to us through friendship and encouragement. When we feel broken or unworthy, your freely offered grace and love are healing balms for our spirits. When grief overwhelms us, we seek comfort through the balm of community. And in our grief, you offer us the balm of your own presence. You who have known grief and heartache. You who promise to hold on to us throughout our own. You indeed revive our souls, offering us glimpses of hope and courage, of light and love. Glimpses which give us what we need to feel revived enough for the next challenge, the next task, the next day. All compassionate God, being together this day is one of the balms we need as our hearts ache over the way too soon death of Linda. We need the reflection and laughter, the stories and shared gratitude which come from celebrating your beloved and gifted child, Linda. She turned to you for healing balms, for strength and renewal, for grace and courage. And then she poured herself out again for family and friends, for children and the disenfranchised, for church and community. She shared so much healing balm in her one wild and precious life. She shared healing balm through phone calls and notes of encouragement through recognizing and remembering our needs and asking after us and our families. She shared healing balm through the budgeting process and awards granted, through words of welcome and kindness in grocery stores and at church, through connecting us with one another with helpful resources, connecting us with you. Linda received such healing balm from her faith and never hesitated to pour it out for others, for the betterment of countless lives, for the betterment of our community, our state, our world. That's what folks are for. We give you thanks, all compassionate God, for her extravagant sharing and for the ways that our sharing today is healing for us. Compassionate God, we know we will continue to tell our Linda stories this day and in the days and years to come. Stories of her partnership with John, her delight in their daughters and grandchildren, her love for her family, enjoying time together, playing games, traveling, spending time together, stories of her sage advice and her years of mentoring, especially women, stories of hospitality, kindness, and friendships across the decades. Stories of churches loved, of simple pleasures and meals shared.
stories of her courageous, assertive, competitive, but also humble spirit. Stories of the mischievous look she would get in her eyes and the way that she would throw her head back in laughter. Stories of the ideals of compassion and inclusion lived out for the betterment of all humanity. As, one, as ones whose lives were impacted by Linda's, help us to recognize the continuing gifts of Linda's life in our own as we hope and act for a more loving and more welcoming world where all have the basic needs met, shelter and food, education and love. And help us to embrace Linda's gifts as eventually we too approach the end of our own lives on this earth. May we do so living our wild and precious lives as fully as she did with confidence that your loving balm will remain with us from this life into the next. We thank you, compassionate God, that for Linda, death and pain are past, and that she is now experiencing fully the joy which you have prepared for all of your children. We pray all of this and the prayers deep within our hearts with gratitude in the name of the Lord of life, Jesus the Christ. Hear us now as we join our voices together, praying the prayer that he taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
invited to make your way across the street to Highlands Fellowship Hall for a time to continue sharing love and support and care for Linda's family and all of us as her friends. At the end of the service, we'll, we'll lead the family out. Ushers will enable the rest to, to be dismissed in a decent and orderly way. Linda was Presbyterian, if nothing else, and I think she would like that. <laughs> so. I invite you now to join with me in our responsive charge and benediction. Life is short, and we do not have too much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel the way with us. So let us be swift to love and make haste to be kind. Let us go out into the world in peace, have courage, hold on to what is good, and return no one evil for evil. suffering, honor all people, love and serve the Lord, and rejoice in the power of the Holy Spirit. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all.